Hi guys, welcome to my fourth maze drawing tutorial. If you haven't watched the previous ones, I recommend starting from there because we're kind of building up on things we've already done. Today we're actually going to learn a really advanced technique and this is actually really difficult. And what happens is we learned how to embed objects inside a maze in the previous video, but now we're going to embed the entrance or the exit inside the maze itself. So we're going to break a little bit from what we've done so far um, and see how it goes. Essentially, anyone who's been following the algorithm till now knows that you can draw an entrance somewhere, let's put it on the right this time, and an exit, and as long as this line, the top line, or right line, or left line, and as long as the top line does not touch the bottom line, there will be one unique solution in between them, even if we stretch out lines coming from within. But what if we want to do a different kind of maze? What if we want to have a maze where you're escaping from inside a maze? So, for example, you're in a cell, and this is the big maze, and you would like to start in here and escape out here. How do we do it? Well, this is actually really, really simple. All we need to do is to make sure that one of the lines from of the out of the cell is connected to the line of the overall maze because let's see why if we connect it in this manner we essentially have here two lines this is the top line and this is the bottom line and as long as they're not crossing between the entrance and the exit we're guaranteed to have one unique solution as well so let's Add lines, make sure they're not crossing, and bam, we have ourselves a maze. Obviously, this line should not be straight, we should make it just as crooked, and we can connect it anywhere, we don't have to connect back to back. So, let's do a more difficult demonstration. We have the cell inside here, and we want to exit out here. And all we have to do, remember, is that the inner line has to connect to the outer line somewhere, and then we're guaranteed to have one unique solution to this maze. So what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to draw this maze to be very wavy. And here, I'll connect it right here, why not? Um, and anyone can see that there is one unique solution right now here. But if I add more lines, as long as they're not intersecting, Will still be one unique solution. Right? So we can have an entrance and an exit, and the entrance is inside the maze itself, and the solution can be going around the entrance cell because that's how we designed it. Um, but as long as we keep following the rules, nothing complicated here. Okay, now for a trick question. What if the roles are reversed? What if I want my exit to be on the outside and I want to make it exactly to one side of the maze? For example, some labyrinth is around and you want to make it to the center. What do you do? Mm. Well, this is really easy. You just flip the arrows. Because the solution doesn't care which direction you're coming from, it's still one unique solution. Now here comes a difficult question. What if I want to have my entrance inside, but still have multiple exits? So let's have the cell of entrance inside, and the outside maze will have two exits. So let's say one and two. Here you win one dollar, here you win two dollars. You want to take this one. Well, this is actually really, really simple. Again, as long as one, of the, as long as one line from the entrance touches any line of the exits, we will have one unique solution. So if we connect it over here, we have a unique solution to both of them. And if we had connected it over here, we'd have a unique solution to both of them. I hope you guys can see it. It might be a little counterintuitive, but it doesn't matter if we add even more exits. If your entrance is embedded within the maze, you only have to add one line to the outside structure to make sure that there is one unique solution to every possible exit. So this is really easy. We solved the case for one inside entrance and multiple outside exits. 
but if we were to flip it around and have multiple entrances and one finished line inside, this is not a good design because we have many entrances which lead to the same solution, to the same finished line, which is not a correct maze. A correct maze is supposed to have one entrance only. So what we would actually have to do is using lines, block every entrance with the exception of the entrance we want. So let's say we want this entrance, we will have to connect a line here and from this side as well, a line here, because we're going to keep the entrance, the entrance and the exit in the same space. And then we have a small embedded maze, uh, which we now have to deal with, and all the other entrances will be blocked. So it doesn't really matter how we block them, they're not useful. So essentially we segmented the maze into smaller mazes, um, but only this entrance will work. So you gotta remember the difference. If you have one entrance on the inside, multiple exits on the outside, you just need to connect one line. If you have many entrances on the outside, one finish in the inside, you need to block all the entrances with the exception of the one you want using connecting lines. Okay, what happens if you want to have multiple entrances on the inside? So we will make an inside cell with three entrances and an outside with one exit. Well, this requires a little planning, but it's not too difficult. We have to choose which one of the entrances will actually lead to the exit and make sure to block the others. So I will choose this entrance to lead to the exit and make sure to block these two. So the middle one I'll block um, just like this, I'll make it lead to nowhere. And this one I'll block um, by drawing a line here for this end and for this line I'll connect it here. So essentially you can see that we have a space here which is blocked, no solution, a space here which is blocked, no solution, and a space here which has one unique solution. And if we follow our rules from before, which you guys remember, no crossing lines, then BAM! We're guaranteed to have a unique solution. What about the case where you have one entrance on the outside and multiple finishes inside? Well, if you don't divide between them, this is really boring because they all lead to the same spot. So I'm going to divide between them. And now, all I have to do is the same as in the first rule. Make sure one of the lines touches... Uh, one of the lines from the inside cell reaches touches the line on the outside, and that will give me a unique solution for each one of them, and we're good. Once again, thank you guys for watching, make sure to hit like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. If you have any questions, you can write them in the comments. Also, I'd love to hear about your maze drawing experience. Did you learn anything? Did you use it in your mazes? If you drew, drew any maze and would like to show me, please email me, I would love to see your mazes. Thank you guys, and until next video, see you guys later.